Now we will discuss the vasodilators which are required for the treatment of the heart failure. Now what is the advantage of this particular vasodilators is vasodilators will reduce the preload of the heart, vasodilators will reduce the afterload on the heart and vasodilators also reduces both the preload and afterload in a combined manner. Now if we see the drugs which will reduce the preload, the drugs which will reduce the preload they include, they are venodilators. Venodilators are the one which will reduce the preload on the heart. Now what did we discuss the preload previously? We have discussed that the preload means the one which will cause the venous return to the heart is called as preload. If we are reducing the preload that means we are reducing the venous return to the heart. And how does the venous return comes to the heart? Venous return it comes through the superior vena cava and as well as the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. Now what do we require in patients with a heart failure? We want that in a patient with heart failure the load on the heart should be reduced. Now how are we reducing that load on the heart? We are trying to reduce the preload and we will also reduce the afterload. We will also reduce the afterload. Now how can we reduce the afterload or what are the drugs which will reduce the afterload is the drugs which are being used are arteriolar vasodilators. These are arteriolar vasodilators. Now arteriolar vasodilators will reduce the afterload. Venodilators will reduce the preload on the heart. Now by reducing the preload and by reducing the afterload what will happen is the load on the heart will be reduced in a patient with a heart failure. Now we have a group of drugs which will reduce both the preload and as well as the afterload. Okay. So the next group of drugs are the drugs which will reduce both the preload and as well as the afterload. Now, now let me discuss what are the drugs which will reduce the preload, what are the drugs which will reduce the afterload and what are the drugs which will reduce both the preload and as well as the afterload. Now if you see the drugs which will reduce the preload in the individual, the drugs which will reduce the preload that means these drugs are venodilators. Now what are those drugs which will act as the venodilators is? they are nothing but the nitrates. So remember these nitrates what do they cause? They cause the dilatation of the veins thereby they will reduce the preload on the heart. Now let me discuss what are the drugs which are used for reducing the afterload on the heart. Remember the drugs which will reduce the afterload are preferentially arteriolar dilators. Now what did we discuss about the afterload? We have discussed the definition of the afterload is that the pressure against which the ventricles have to pump the blood into the aorta and pulmonary artery is called as afterload. Now if the pressure exerted by the left ventricle on the aorta if it is reduced then we call it as the afterload on the heart is being reduced. When the afterload on the heart is being reduced in a patient with congestive heart failure, the oxygen demand by the heart will be reduced. So now let me discuss what are the drugs which will reduce the afterload on the heart. The drugs which will reduce the afterload on the heart include they are hydralazine, minoxidil, and as well as the calcium channel blockers like nifedipine. So these are the drugs which will act as the arteriolar dilators and they will reduce the afterload on the heart. And remember 
these drugs they are preferred in forward failure with low cardiac index and without markedly increased central venous pressure so these are the conditions where we use the drugs which will reduce the afterload on the heart now we have discussed about the calcium channel blockers remember calcium channel blockers which we have to use in patients with congestive heart failure is it is non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers we should not use the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers and what are those dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers they include the verapamil and as well as diltiazem verapamil and diltiazem should not be used in patients with the congestive heart failure what does this verapamil and diltiazem do remember this verapamil and diltiazem they have a direct cardio depressant action on the heart so that is the reason why the verapamil and diltiazem should not be used in a patient with the congestive heart failure if at all if you want to use any calcium channel blocker we have to use a non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers but not a verapamil and diltiazem should not be used in a patient with the congestive cardiac failure now so these are the drugs which will reduce the afterload i will repeat what are the drugs which will reduce the afterload is we have the hydralazine we have the calcium channel blockers we have minoxidil so these are the drugs which will reduce the afterload on the heart now next we have the drugs which will reduce both the preload and as well as the afterload now if you have a drug which will reduce the preload and as well as afterload it is very much advantageous to the heart now let me tell you the examples of the drugs which will reduce both the preload and as well as the afterload the drugs include the ac inhibitors angiotensin receptor blockers nitroprusside and as well as the alpha blockers so these are the drugs which will reduce both the preload and as well as the afterload now if you take the advantage of your ac inhibitors and as well as angiotensin receptor blockers remember ac inhibitors and as well as the angiotensin receptor blockers these are the main stay of drugs which are used in patients with the heart failure why because what is the added advantage of this ac inhibitors and as well as angiotensin receptor blockers if you go back to our pathophysiology what did we discuss in our pathophysiology was because of the activation of the ras mechanism right i have said you there are three compensatory mechanisms which will be activated in a patient with the congestive heart failure now what are those three compensatory mechanisms those three compensatory mechanisms include activation of sympathetic nervous system activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system and then non osmotic release of the antidiuretic hormone now you take the second compensatory mechanism that is the activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system renin angiotensin aldosterone system will result in the formation of the angiotensin 2 will result in the formation of angiotensin 2 this angiotensin 2 will does or it does two important functions or it has the action of the angiotensin 2 or the effect of angiotensin 2 will be it will cause aldosterone release and it will also cause vasoconstriction now you take this aldosterone remember this aldosterone will cause the cardiac remodeling will cause the cardiac remodeling 
whenever there is cardiac remodeling remember the mortality of the individual increases in a patient with a congestive heart failure now by using this particular ACE inhibitors and as well as angiotensin receptor blockers what we are trying to do we are trying to inhibit this RAS pathway when we inhibit this RAS pathway the aldosterone is not being formed when aldosterone is not formed then cardiac remodeling will not occur when there is no cardiac remodeling remember what these ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers they are doing is they will improve the mortality in patients with the congestive heart failure so the important drugs in patients with congestive heart failure they include mainly the ACE inhibitors and as well as the angiotensin receptor blockers now so and next point is we have a combination of another drugs which will reduce the preload and as well as the afterload now what did we discuss the drugs which will act as the venodilators they include the nitrates the drugs which act as arteriolar vasodilators they include hydralazine now what you try to give is you try to give a combination of these drugs that means you give nitrates and you give hydralazine which is an arteriolar vasodilator even the combination of these drugs that is hydralazine plus nitrate so this particular combination will also reduce the mortality in the individual.